Now, Ice and Bob have entered into a written contract for Bob to deliver 100 boxes filled with goods to Alice's warehouse by a specified date in exchange for £10,000. After signing the contract, Alice realizes that she actually needs 150 boxes to fulfill her own customer's orders. Alice contacts Bob and asks if he would be willing to deliver an additional 50 boxes for an extra £2,000. Bob agrees in writing to Alice's request. However, after delivering the additional 50 boxes of goods, Bob demands an extra £3,000 from Alice. He claims that the increased workload was more burdensome than anticipated. Alice refuses to pay the additional amount, arguing that they already agreed on a price of £2,000 for the additional boxes. What legal principle governs the modification of the contract in this situation? So we're looking now for FLK contract law for an identification of a particular legal principle. So option A, the parole evidence rule, which prohibits parties from introducing oral evidence to modify the terms of a written contract. Is it B, the doctrine of consideration, which requires parties to exchange something of value to modify an existing contract? Is it option C, the doctrine of promissory estoppel, which prevents parties from going back on their promises when the other party relies on that promise? Okay, is it option D, the rule against penalties which invalidates contractual provisions that impose excessive or unconscionable penalties for breach of contract? Or is it option E, the statute of frauds, which requires certain types of contracts to be in writing and signed by the parties in order to be enforceable? Now, which one would you guess is the correct answer? The correct answer is option number B. The doctrine of consideration. What has happened here is the traditional scenario of a contractual modification. We had an original contract that was 100 boxes for 10,000 pounds. This contract has been modified now to 150 contracts for 12,000 pounds. In order to have a valid modification, we need the provision of additional consideration from both sides of the deal. So each party must be providing something new to modify that existing contract. This isn't controversial here because Bob is providing more boxes of goods and Alice is paying more money. If that's the case, then the contract has been effectively modified. Let's have a look at the other ones. The parole evidence rule. Yeah, okay, fine. But this isn't what we're dealing with here. In any event, it says that they've agreed in writing for the request and they've done other things. But this... The parole evidence rule is something that comes in contentious issues thereafter and in litigation. It is not something that is going to affect contractual formation or modification issues. The doctrine of promissory estoppel. Well, if you went carefully through my lectures on contract law, and I've got a very nice one that takes you through the totality of the contract law syllabus on the playlist that's called the whole law series. So you should you should go have a look at that one. If you went through that one, you would uh, get a come across a discussion of promissory estoppel, promissory estoppel cannot be used to establish new contracts. It can also it can only be used to suspend the operation of existing contracts in specific circumstances. So for the scenario that we've got here, which is a modification scenario, promissory estoppel is not the correct answer. The rule against penalties and stuff, which is in D, is irrelevant. We're not talking about the penalty here. And the statute of frauds, again, is irrelevant because the issue here was contractual modification. There was no allegation of fraud. If these guys disagree about what they want to do, it could be a contractual disagreement. It doesn't need to be interpreted as a fraudulent action of some description. So that that part is not relevant. So the only relevant, correct answer here is, or, yeah, I mean, it would be difficult to make an argument for any of the rest, to be honest, uh, is B, the doctrine of consideration. In fact, this is a relatively simple question, but the complexity comes from the length because you've got a chunky scenario and then a rather wordy possible answers. So this has eaten away your time and has limited the amount of time you can take to think about what the correct answer might be. This is why this answer is difficult in comparison to the previous um, uh, question with David uh, the director, where it was shorter, but perhaps the issue was a little bit more complex.